Now, similarly, uh, just as we uh, saw this in uh, with uh, revenue, there is a similar situation with expenses. Okay, in cash accounting. So, so let's say, uh, for example, you let's take these all out, and let's say you you actually outsourced one part of this e-commerce product to some other third-party vendor to develop it, you actually paid that third-party vendor maybe uh, one lakh in advance payment so that you will get delivery of that payment in three months. So in the previous case, you got an advance, that is in terms of revenue. In this case, you're actually making an advance. So it's an expense, you know, cash is leaving, leaving your uh, account statement. So even though you paid your expenses here, uh, you have no expense here and you have no expense here. You don't get the delivery of the product until the third month right here. And you know, just for the sake of you know easiness, we are not going to assume any revenue out of it yet. Okay. So, uh, yet. So what we are going to do is we are going to see how the same thing is captured when it comes to accrual accounting. In accrual accounting, what you would do is even though one lakh was given out in cash in the first month you will not record the whole one lakh as an expense in that month you will actually divide one lakh by three uh, and you will record that as you know 33,000 uh, and roughly uh, expense equated every month and not always is this done equally it really depends on how much of that work is for that product is being done that month and the reason this is done you know the reason cash accounting is not done accrual accounting is done once again is because when you look at an income statement you want to know what expense in a company correlates with what revenue in a company uh, and which is why accrual accounting is done uh, this is a really important uh, you know factor in an income statement when you read an income statement now there is also a special case though a minor one in cost of goods sold once again we're gonna uh, you know cost of goods sold i'm sure you remember this whole number here now in case of a, a business like domino's pizza your cost of goods sold is fairly straightforward it is essentially the ingredients you use in the um, making the pizza and maybe some labor costs of the chefs who are actually making the pizza, right? It's fairly straightforward. But let's say in the case of an IT services company like this one right here, there's an IT services company, your cost of goods sold is not that straightforward. You know, think about it. Why? Take Infosys, for example. What is Infosys' cost of goods sold? What is Infosys' product? Their product is a software, an IT software, an application, a web app, or any of those things. And what are the ingredients to make a software? There are all these, you know, programmers and project managers and team leads who are working 20 hours a day, seven days a week, getting the project deadline. Then there's all this computer and electricity and hardware they use. But are those really ingredients difficult to say because you use the same same computer for the next product project as well, and it goes on, so on and so forth. So you, you're beginning to see there is a slight difference in what an Infosys's cost of goods sold include and a Domino's Pizza's cost of goods sold include. For Infosys, bulk of their cost of goods sold is the salary that they're paying their engineers, their programmers, the system analysts, their team leads and all that. Bulk of their cost of goods sold is that because they are the ingredients that are actually sitting down and programming and that is what is bringing out the product. Where, whereas things like hardware costs are maybe they, they maybe maybe they, they say okay ten percentage of this computer's cost or ten percentage of this electricity goes towards cost of goods sold and the remaining goes to the next project and and so on and so forth. But when you come to Domino's, you see the the biggest component of their cost of goods sold is actually the ingredients, the raw materials that go into the pizza, and employee salary is actually a minor element, right? The chef making the uh, pizza and uh, you know the guy who actually came up with the recipe of new products that is a very minor part of cost of goods sold in Domino's, whereas in Infosys that is a huge part of their cost of goods sold. 
and this differentiation is very important to understand and this understanding coupled with our previous example where we looked at Amazon's, uh, you know, Amazon and uh, Google where we tried to understand why is one company's uh, cost of goods sold uh, so different from another company's cost of goods sold. You probably remember that example. So coupled with those two examples, this helps you better understand uh, and better analyze an income statement. There is this slide. You remember this whole example where we spoke about why is Amazon's gross margin only 24% and Google's is 65%. And these are some of the differences why that happens. So um, now you've actually understood uh, a very important uh, special case in income statement, which is accrual accounting. Uh, you've also understood uh, uh, the whole uh, accruing uh, the whole concept of how expense is done using accrual accounting and how revenue is done using accrual accounting. You also understood the difference, uh, different kinds of cost of goods sold possible in a company. Now, um, the uh, you know the one other thing that we need to go over to finish up and close up this topic of income statement is the whole concept of financial analysis, the financial ratios uh, in an income statement, and that was supposed to be one of the initial goals for the session. I know, but we're gonna dedicate a special session just for that because it's really important, and we're gonna um, finish it up. All right. Thank you very much. I will see you soon in the next session.